All right, now let's actually apply some of these angle of elevation, angle depression problems. All right, here's this one. We have a Seattle Space Needle, and it's a really cool thing they built for a World's Fair years ago, and it's actually a revolving um, restaurant on top. And it says the Seattle Space Needle cast a 67 meter shadow. Remember, the shadow is going to be on the ground. It says if the angle of elevation of from the tip of the shadow to the top, right here, of the Space Needle is 70 degrees. So angle of elevation, I had to look horizontally and then up, right? So that's 70 degrees. How tall is the space needle? Now the cool thing is that we get to assume is that the space needle is perpendicular to the ground. And by the way, it is, okay? I want to know how tall it is. So then looking at this, I have a right triangle. Now of our sayings, here we got our Sokotoa here, okay? What two sides do we have? We're going to have our opposite and are adjacent. So which one of our two, I mean three ratios am I going to use? Tangent. Very good. So you're going to go the tangent of 70 degrees is going to be opposite, which would be x, which gives us our height, to 67 meters, which is our adjacent leg. Then we solve for this, and our next step is we'd multiply both sides by 67. Then that is what we punch into our calculator. Now they said round to the nearest meter which means no decimals on this one. So if we could put this in here, we're going to go 67 times the tangent of 70. And I should have 184.08, but I went to the nearest meter, so that's going to be 184 meters tall. So how do we get there? We got it using tangent. Now, the same idea happens for the next one. Now, please do not laugh at this. I take it personal. I cannot draw airplanes, okay? And so, for those of you who have a little more talent than me, that's my airplane. Can you tell? I know it looks like a pathetic rabbit. Use your imagination. It's an airplane, okay? It says, suppose that plane is at an altitude of 3,500 feet. So, I know up above the ground, it's 3,500 feet. It says the elevation from the airport to the plane is 29 degrees. So the airport would be on the ground going up, looking up to the plane right here is going to be 29 degrees. Notice I still form a right triangle here. Now this is what they ask you. Now be careful what they're asking for. What is the horizontal distance between the plane and the airport? So I'm looking for this ground work. Now if you were a pilot, you would say the angle of depression was 29 degrees because he'd be going down. But the cool thing is I only have to know here, in this case, the angle of elevation. But no, angle of elevation, angle of depression are the same. So when you draw their triangles, they're the exact same size. So looking again, I realize this is my opposite, this is my adjacent. I'm gonna end up using tangent once again. So I got the tangent of 29 degrees is gonna be opposite, which is 3,500 feet over adjacent, which is x. Now remember, if you solve for this, you can really just switch to the extremes because of proportions. So I get x is equal to 3,500 divided by the tangent of 29 degrees. And so working on this, I just go 3,500 divided by the tangent of 29 degrees and they say to the nearest foot, so I round up here, and so I don't have to round up because it's 0.1. That's approximately 6,314 feet. Now, here's the deal. That's a little over a mile because 5,280 feet would be a mile. All right, let's look at the next one. Now, the next one's a little more complicated, but we're just going to set up the diagram to see if you understand how it works. All right, so as a pilot is flying, okay, so here's my lovely airplane. Again, use your imagination. There's my airplane. Oh, that's worse than normal. Um, is an altitude of 12,000 feet. So here we got 12,000 feet. By the way, mine won't be drawn to scale. And it says the angle of depression to one airport is 78 degrees. So here's airport one. I get over here at airport two. And if I look at my line of sight here, basically it looks something like this. But depression means that he had to look out horizontally first and then down. That's 78 degrees. Okay, but what do I know about my angle of elevation then have to be? 78 degrees, so don't forget that. And then again, he sees another airport that would be about 19 degrees is its angle of depression. So right here is 19. Well, again, if I extend this, 
don't my angle of elevation and angle of depressions have to be the same? And so this would be 19 degrees. So now let's think about this for a moment. What they're asking says, what is the distance between the two airports? So I want to know what this is. What in the world am I going to do? And I like how one of you answered this in class. You just find the length of the side for each of the two triangles, the small triangle and the big triangle, and take their difference. And you're exactly correct. So all you'd have to do is set up two tangent ratios again. Like I would want this one to be x, and I'd probably call this whole thing from here to here y. So if I was doing x, I'd go, all right, the tangent of 78 degrees is equal to 12,000 over x, and so you switch them real quick. So I get 12,000 divided by the tangent of 78, so I get 12,000, oops, got to clear one of my things here. All right, let me put it up here so you can see it. 12,000, and the other day in class, I forgot a zero. How embarrassing. So we got a tangent of 78, okay, and so x equals 25, and let's just give several different decimal points here, so we go 6, 8, and say, and that would be in feet, I do believe, and then we have to do the same thing again now for this angle, we're going to call it y, so I get the tangent of 19 degrees this time, it's still going to be um, 12,000 feet over um, y, and then I just flip-flop them again, and it better be longer because it's further away, so I go again and I'll just go 12,000 divided by the tangent of 19. And that one is basically 34,850.53. And we're going to subtract what we had earlier, which is going to be 2,550.68. And we get approximately the distance, which is the difference of the two, y minus x is going to be 32,300 um, because it says to the nearest foot. So we'd actually have to round that up one because it's 0.8. I don't know if you guys can see that a little bit better. There you go. Round it up one. So it'd be 32,300 feet. So hopefully that's kind of helpful. Now let's get this last example down. This last example, I want to ask you, what angle are you working with? Angle of elevation or depression in this case? In this case, this should be an angle of depression, but I know it's congruent to my angle of elevation, so I'm plugging that in, that's 40 degrees. Something like this would be used, like if you're looking for the distance, like if you're hiking down a mountain, or like if you're trying to find the slope of a ramp, something kind of unique like that. Um, or maybe you're like in an air balloon, floating away, and you know how high you were. And we're gonna still solve for x. Looking at this, this is my opposite. This is my hypotenuse, I'm gonna use sine this time. So I got the sine of 40 degrees is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, flip-flop. So I get the sine of 40 degrees. I want this to the nearest tenth of a unit, so there's a decimal spot on this one. So 500 divided by the sine of 40 should be 77.9. So 777.9 meters. All right, guys, I hope this helps you with this problem.